This is a Swiss cow. There are 1.6 million of them in the country. And every year, they make a trip up and down the Alps. In the summer, they go up, where melting snow ensures that there's enough food and water. That's important since to produce milk, a cow can drink up to 170 liters of water in a single day. In the winter, they go back down from the mountains to seek refuge. The cows do this every year. But in 2018, there was a problem. A drought meant that there wasn't enough water, and Swiss helicopters were used to deliver water to thirsty cows. But it wasn't the first time that it happened. In 2015, there was a minor diplomatic incident when the Swiss army was accused of stealing water from a French lake. It's part of a bigger story about how the Alps are changing. This video was sponsored by Surfshark. This is a model of the Alps over the past 10,000 years. Since the last ice age, the glaciers that covered most of the Alps have shrunk by a lot. But recently, with the rise in temperatures caused by man-made greenhouse gas emissions, that melting has accelerated. This is Johannes Landmann. He's a glaciologist based in Zurich, Switzerland. So what we're seeing now in terms of snow and ice melt in the Alps is um, that it's taking place at an accelerated pace because of uh, global warming. And melting that would not have happened under natural climate variability is now happening. Part of the reason for that is that the Alps are warming much faster than the rest of the world. While the world is currently on course to warm by 3 degrees by the end of the century, the Alps could warm by 5 degrees by then. This boils down to two things. That the Alps are relatively landlocked, which means that bigger oceans, such as the Atlantic, which uh, usually have a balancing effect on the climate, are relatively far away and heat can get trapped in the Alps. And then there's the albedo effect. Surfaces of ice and snow reflect more light and heat back into space. And as the Alps melt, there is less glaciers and snow cover, which means that surfaces are darker on average and more energy is taken up and in the end the temperature increases. Both of these effects are leading to the Alps melting in more ways than one. Permafrost, which is frozen soil and rock, is melting in the summer. And when the water freezes again in the winter, it expands and breaks the rock, leading to mountain sides collapsing. There's also the melting of snow and glaciers, which are having an impact on how much water is available in the Alps. And when we look at glaciers over the past hundred years, they've retreated significantly. While the ice and snow cover of the Alps is much less than during the Ice Age, it plays an important role in water storage. The Alps contain about 100 cubic kilometers of ice, and alongside snow, they store water over the course of years, decades, or even centuries in the case of glaciers. In a normal year, snow builds up in the winter, and when it melts, it ensures that there's enough water throughout the summer. But the warming of the Alps is changing that. Because of the warmer temperatures in the early winter, a significant amount of snow, especially at lower altitudes, falls as water instead. And the ice and snow are melting earlier. A French study comparing snow cover around the Mont Blanc between the 1960s and the 2000s found significant decreases in snow cover in both the autumn and spring. In the case of glaciers, this study found that the time frame for melting in general was changing. The strongest melt is taking place up to two months earlier in June or July, which means that as glaciers become smaller, there's less water available at the end of the summer. And as they shrink, it means they store and can give off less water than before. By 2050, Europe is expected to lose 50% of its glaciers. And since the water from the glaciers is used both for human consumption and agriculture, it means living in the Alps will become more difficult. Farmers are becoming more dependent on shrinking amounts of rainfall at the end of the summer, making them more exposed to droughts. It means that they won't be able to feed the same amount of cows. Or that like in 2018, they'll have to be fed by helicopter. But this isn't the only problem. But first, we'd like to share a word from this video's sponsor. Are you a Swiss cow that has enough food and water and lives in a green pasture? Are you now looking beyond your meadow and for the finer things in life, like anonymous internet access? Then Surfshark is just what you've been looking for. Surfshark is a VPN provider that allows you to reroute your data through another server. If you're planning to connect to public Wi-Fi, even on a private network, like that of your local stable, using a VPN makes sense. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the web safely. You would've wanted to get bull-eed online, would you? 
Another feature of Surfshark is that you can make it look like your IP address is coming from a different area or country. With Surfshark's 32,000 servers spread through 65 different countries, it means that you can change your virtual location to nearly anywhere in the world. If you're on the go, this can make it possible to stream videos that are only available from a certain location. That means changing your Netflix library and getting access to videos through bypassing geo restrictions. With Surfshark, having a VPN has never been as convenient, with the possibility to connect all your devices with a single account. If you want to support Into Europe and are considering getting a VPN, go to Surfshark Deals slash Into Europe and enter promo code Into Europe for 83% off and 3 months for free. This 2011 study found that between 1908 and 2008, the amount of meltwater in the Alps had shrunk by 20% in the summer months. This has an effect on the navigability of rivers, particularly upstream, where low water levels during the summer months means some places will no longer be accessible by river. 26% of the water from the Rhine and 34% of the water from the Danube comes from the Alps either through meltwater or rainfall. And projections for the Rhône found that at the mouth of the river, water flow could be cut in half in the summer months. Unfortunately, some of the changes that are taking place are irreversible. The glacial melt we're seeing right now is also the result of past centuries warming. So some of the melting that we will see until 2050 is going to happen regardless of what we do. It has already been committed. The Alps will experience a warmer, drier climate, which will make it more difficult for the 14 million people living there and for agriculture. And while it's possible to compensate for some of the water losses by building dams, that comes at a cost. Switzerland is considering building additional dams, but replacing the country's 1800 glaciers is infeasible. But despite the changes that the Alps will undergo in the coming 30 years, there's still hope. As we look further into the future, there is more uncertainty how glaciers will evolve. This is because it's still unclear how our efforts to fight global warming will go. So our decisions now have a direct effect on how glaciers will look like in the future. If we do a good job, we might save at least some of them. No matter what happens in the second half of the century, people will have to get used to the different climate in the Alps. This was Into Europe. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest updates and analysis on European news. Once again, a thank you to this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Make sure to check the link in the description to get a discount on their VPN.